Well, I'm back. <laughs> oh, and as you can see, I wasn't gone very long, but I'm back because I wanted to do this small or short. Uh-oh, Jay's going to do a short video. <laughs> I wanted to do this short tutorial on my pen that I'm calling Jay's Knit Circle of Life. Now let me see if that's showing up in my camera a little bit. I don't know how the color is going to look. But Jay's Knit Circle of Life pins that you have seen on many of my knitted uh, sweaters and vests and things like that. And um, it was just something. I, like I said, I didn't have a big big bright idea or great design uh, dream or something. I just started making them one one day I, I some time ago, a few years back. I needed something. I was going somewhere <laughs> with my knit friends, and I wanted something a little extra on my sweater. And then this was on Sunshine on a Cloudy Day. It was the uh, first time I put it on camera, I believe. And at that time, I didn't even have a name. I just had it on there because it matched the sweater. I had used the yarn. And so you can see... move this black one out of the way but you can see it's just really just a simple little um, eye cord and then I put a crochet edge and then the pico edge and then a pretty accent in the center something to kind of tie it together just to make it something different and like I say a lot of times in my regular life when I'm just going to Joann's or Michael's or somewhere I just normally have on my sweatpants and sweat tops you know and but I'll stick one of these uh, you know if I have on a scarf or something I can stick one of these on there and people always say oh what a cute pin where'd you get that you know so but I want to do this quick little tutorial and let's see how quick see if Jay can do a quick <laughs> video I'm going to give it my best. Okay. First of all, uh, it's made with a simple eye cord. And all, I'm gonna, uh, all you need for supplies are some double-pointed needles. Now, my friend Juanita, back on one of her videos, she was demonstrating this little, you know, that little hand knitting machine. I've never used one, but, you know, I don't know if that will work or not. But it could be you could give it a try. But I know Juanita at Obet She Spins was had was demonstrating uh, the little hand knitter and uh, showing how easy it was. So I don't know. Perhaps it it would work on these. I don't know. But I'm just going to use double pointed needles. And this is a size eight. The there's no particular brand. You don't have to rush out and buy some. Just see what you have. Uh, you know, just see what uh, double pointed needles you have. And you need, of course, a pair. And then you're going to need a small crochet hook, like a, a G or an H, or something like that. It really comes in handy when we do the edging. And main thing is, of course, the yarn now. And what I do, I just keep a bag of yarns as I finish up projects. And I have a little bit, especially the yarns that I really like, like Karen's. Uh, yarn or, or red heart shimmer or whatever so let's see if this is showing up okay on the camera all right yeah so you can see I just have a bag I have several bags and you know this is these are scrap projects these are projects you just uh, you know you just want to use just what you can left over you don't want to have to go out and buy anything so for instance you could just simply grab out any color out of your scrap bag. Now you can use uh, yarn that already has bling in it like here's some yarn from uh, oh I don't know it's just left over from something but it's gray and it has a little bling in it. I didn't take bring any more over here but you know how just some yarn has already has its own bling. Oh yeah because I was doing a, I was doing a and see we're just gonna make an eye cord with this yarn or like I said if you have a yarn a finer yarn like this is some Karen Simply Soft 
you can add a little bling to it just to make the center. And I normally, I, I'm, uh, I keep this Vanna Glamour. Every time Joanne has it on sale, has it in the markdown bin, I'll grab up some because it's just very nice yarn to, uh, now, you know, I don't knit this small, so I have to use it for something. And it's just pretty colored. So, for instance, you wouldn't think that these two could go together, but they could. And all you have to do is just simply, um, you know, I'll be demonstrating uh, in just a minute the eye cord, but you can simply put these two together and do your eye cord. And that gives bling and a little texture and a little color to the center here. So, and, I, and this comes in lots of colors. You know, her. this is Vanna, and it's by Lion Brand. So you can see every time I, you know, there's a color I don't have, if, it's on, if it comes on sale, I just grab it up and keep it. I use these to accent things. Like I say, I'm going to accent these little, isn't that pretty? Look at those pretty colors. I'm going to use them to accent my little swirl where I'll put it together with some regular yarn. And that's all there is to it. So... We're going to make an eye cord. We're going to start by making an eye cord. If you haven't made one before, I've done it before on another video, but I'm going to do it again. We're going to simply make an eye cord. You will also need a uh, yarn needle. You will also need a, a needle and maybe some pretty buttons or something for the center. Something for the center to kind of give it a little extra bling. And then you probably could just glue a little pin back on the back, make it easier on yourself. Well, what do you think of that? Now, let's see what we can do in real time. All right, I'm going to take this um, Hobby Lobby Soft Secret Light Denim. It matched this blue well enough that it's fine. You don't ever have to have a perfect match. You just want something that looks great. Okay, so all I'm going to do is do an eye cord with holding two strands. I haven't seen this in a long time, so I don't know what in the world. I'm going to have to cut this. I have no idea. Put that over there. Okay, now. So, all we, to get started, all we need to do is to take both yarns and just hold them together. And we're going to make an eye cord. And I'm going to use my number eight double pointed needles. Does that make sense? Okay, let's see how we're doing on the camera. Let me just kind of take my, yep, all right, I see myself. Okay. And an eye cord, I've done this before on camera, so, but I'm going to leave just a small tail, about four or five inches. It doesn't have to be long because we're going to use some, uh, we'll thread our needle or so, but anyway, and just make a, just make your loop over your finger. And now I'm just going to cast on, this is the first stitch right there, and I'm going to cast on using both strands, two, three, and just four stitches. That's all I need. I've tried five before or six, and they were just too thick. Three wasn't quite enough, but you can experiment. This will be your, your pin. You can experiment. I'm just showing you, you know how I put it together. Now, if you've never done an eye cord, real quick, we just cast on our four stitches. One, two, three, four, two strands. All right, the working yarns are in back. They always stay in the back, okay? Here is, you want to slide, always slide your yarn. Of course, I'm right-handed, so I'm sliding my yarn. I guess that's to the right. Well, do this end of the needle. Okay, you never turn. It's always pull and slide so I'll just demonstrate so now we're just going to knit as usual go up under both strands make sure you've got the working yarn and not the tail and just knit yeah let me see if make sure I got both of, of them make sure you have both yarns that's going to be that's probably about the hardest thing to make sure that you pick up both strands let's see I don't think I did nope Hold on, sorry, I done faux pas before I started. Okay. All right, let's try it again. All right. Knit one. Knit two. Knit three under both strands. And knit four. 
All right. Pull. Give it a nice little pull. And I'm going to slide it. Just slide it over. And we will continue. And you just knit as usual. Now, we're going to you just do it a couple more times here. Just to make sure you just pull. Now, I don't know how many stitches you'd have to put on that little machine. I don't know. I didn't think about that. But like I said, I don't need but a small eye cord, so I don't know if that if it'll work or not. But anyway, so you're just knitting as usual. This eye cord, these four stitches, two, three, and four. Four. Like I said, the hardest part is just trying to pick up both strands, making sure that you have both. Oops. Well, you can tell I, I've had too much coffee or tea, something. All right, one more. Let's try it again. Okay. Now it starts to make the tube in on itself. So pull and slide. Just slide your stitches to this end of the. Do not turn. Oh, Jay. <laughs> Am I going to have to redo this whole tape? I hope not. Okay, let's go. All right, knit. I'm just going to keep on going. Ten like nothing happened. Two, three, and four. I was watching Dancing with the Stars, and Tamar was in the hospital or something happened. And I'm like, man, what in the world? So I just turn the TV off and I'll, I go here and make a crafty video. <laughs> Looks like I just come over here and sit down and just said I'd make a crafty video. All right. Three. Here comes three now. Four. All right. So now I'm on my way. I'm settling down now. Okay, I'm okay. And don't look at that little mistake. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to keep going. And you're just going to pull your yarn. Now, you need to make an eye cord. This is an eye cord. And I need it to be at least 14 to 15 inches. If you, if you pull it just a little bit, that's past 12. So I'd say that's an extra four inches or something close to it. So about 14 inches, about like that. You don't have to you leave real long tails because we're going to add some thread. But what do you think of that? So this is the eye cord. So I'm going to continue with the blue because I'm going to be working in blue on this blue uh, to work this project. So I will continue. I will pull and always slide. And the yarn, working yarn is always in the back. And I will see you back at around 14 inches. Now, you can look through your stash. This is a great time if you're going to do it. Like I said, this is a good for just using up scrap in your stash. If you can just see all the <laughs> little scrap yarn I have. And, you know, I just, I'm just not in the mood to, to make a lot of squares and sew them together you know I'm just not in that mood right now it's near getting near the holidays and I want to have I want to go bam 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 I'm ready to go I got holiday stuff coming up I've got things to do and I just really don't want to you know use my scrap to make little squares or anything but this I think will just be very cute and I think you'll like it. and it's simple so Get grab some scraps, grab some double pointed needles, and I'll see you back at about 14 inches on my eye cord. Well, as you can see, I've been busy. I went ahead and worked up a few more. Like I said, they're just once you get it down, they're just simple little eye cords with some with a pretty crocheted edge. So I started just kind of looking through some of my beads or buttons you're going to need something for the center to cover that little hole we're going to leave now this is part of that um, collection where I think they're meant for bracelets but now the a yarn needle will not go through 
the little holes that you use to secure this little um, embellishment. So you'd have to use a regular needle and regular thread. But it could possibly go right there in the center. I was thinking about something like that. That that could be pretty. Well, I don't know. You know, that's kind of. Or here's a button I found. Uh, Hoppy Lobby has some beautiful um, these jewel buttons, prettier than any of the other stores I've I've not seen any like that I've at the other stores that I've seen at Hobby Lobby. I mean. I'll, I won't take time on this video, but I've just been buying them. Every time they have a half 50% sale off. Now look at that. Is that gorgeous or what? So I just, I'm just playing around. I hadn't attached yet. I So what you need to do is just, uh, you know, try different buttons on different pieces to see what they look like. And as you can see on this one, that's a nice little glitter. This one was a little harder to kind of, I'm not sure about this one yet. I haven't found something, like I say, some of these are pretty and some of them are just ugly. <laughs> I think this is an ugly one, but but I don't know, you know. But it's just fun. Look, and it didn't cost me anything, people. It's just scrap yarn that you make the eye cord. That's all there is. Okay, so I'll move these and I'll lay these aside. Let me just move the buttons so I won't lose those. Now I'll just lay these aside. And let's go back to our eye cord. And as you can see, I've done up my blue. I hope I made it long enough so we can get a good sample. And this is what you're going to have once you bind off. You know, you just do the eye cord in the segment before this one. I did the eye cord. You knit it just, just like you normally do. And then you bind off. I had three stitches. So I had a little tail on each side. But I'm going to get rid of some of this tail. So I'm going to go ahead and just... Make a knot on this side and slowly pull a knot down like that. And then just go ahead and get rid of uh, this. It was, it's going to make it a lot easier when we get ready to sew. If you don't have a million tails, you can see what I'm doing. And on this side, just kind of make a little knot and tie it. Tie it off again. It's already tied off, but we're going to tie it off one more time. Make sure it doesn't come loose. Okay. Now, I can just cut that off. Save myself a lot of headache. Now, all right, I'm done with these little tails. Now, I've just got my plain eye cord. Now, I also have a yarn needle. And I've put at least, I don't know, 25, 30 inches of uh, yarn for my sewing. And this is all that we're going to do. And on the eye cord, you know, you can look at the front. You can tell the front, and then you can kind of turn it over, and you can see the rough side, which is the wrong side, the back. Well, we're just going to start in the back. And I like to rotate mine. Let's see if I'm doing it right now. Make sure I'm going the right way. You're just going to rotate it, start rotating it, to make a little swirl like this. See, that's all you're going to be doing. But we're going to go ahead and sew it as we go. Uh, now, when I first started, I tried to close up that little hole. But then I got to where I just leave it and let the button or whatever. See that hole there? I just go ahead. Now, make sure you're on the wrong side. I take my yarn needle and my yarn is already threaded. I pull through and I'm going to leave a little tail. Then I go back through it to, to lock it in like a back stitch. I hope this blue is showing up. Okay, now I begin, and what I like to do is pull on the cord just to kind of keep it loose. Next thing, you make sure you're on the back side, on the wrong side, and then I swirl just a little bit. Then I take a little tiny stitch across the swirl and the, this first part, and it's just like a little... Uh, whip stitch. I pull this a little bit just to kind of keep it loose. I take a little tiny stitch. Don't pick up too much yarn. You definitely don't want it to go uh, to the other side. Just a tiny bit of yarn on each one. And now I am just securing my swirl, my swirl or my yarn in place. And you can just keep going. Kind of look at the front side. You can kind of see if you 
doing okay a little bit of the yarn see not much pull it through just a whip stitch just kind of picking up a little bit of each and I like to give a tug on it just to keep it loose and continue to go this is why you need at least um, 14 you know about 14 inches of eye cord you can go longer if you just want to if you know right off the bat you want a larger piece you can go you know 15 or 16 inches and that just means this part of the but by the time we add the uh, crochet edge it's going to grow now every once in a while I take a peek and turn it over and see if you're getting your little swirl on <laughs> okay pull it just kind of relax it a little bit tiny stitches as I'm working my way around and I've got this part of the yarn in my left hand because I'm right-handed so it just make it just works better for me going in this direction I guess you'd be different if you were going if you're left-handed oops all right now we're just going to continue on till we get to the end That's why I did, that's why I went ahead and cut off all the other tails and strings or, and weaved them in. You just don't want all that hanging on the back because it can get confusing. So I'm just going around. Just really first grader sewing. Remember those little sewing cards? Remember those little cards that we used to buy when we were kids? Well, maybe you don't, but I know somebody remembers. And you'd sit for hours sewing those little cards, had little pictures on them, and you'd, I guess you'd outline something. Then you'd take it a loose, you pull the yarn out and start over. It's kind of like that sewing. Round and round. Okay, now I'm getting coming up. And look, it once while I turn over, see how it looks. Okay, that's pretty good. Seems real relaxed. It wasn't, um, and it just seems nice and relaxed. Okay, so let's get up to the end here. Now I'm coming up to my end, and there's a little knot there, so you can kind of um, tuck that under or in or whatever you can just to kind of hide that knot. The crocheting will hide it too, but I'm going to make sure. I'm going to make sure it's on the laying on the back side as I come up and whip stitch it down. I'm going to whip stitch it down so that it stays. And then I'm going to go back in and just continue on to whip stitch, whip stitch a little more to make sure that is secure. Maybe I'm going to put one more stitch right there. Now, I have my little end where I have to stop. You see? It's there. Now I'm going to take, before I do anything else, I'm going to go ahead and weave my yarn in towards the center. Anytime you stop, weave anything so it's already towards the center. So there we go. So now I have where I, the beginning yarn and where I'm ending, and I have it right here at the center. In fact, I'm going to weave it on around a little bit more so I'm on the other side. So if you have to tie anything off, you'll have something. Okay. Now, I'll just cut a little of this so it won't be so long. All right. Now we have our little swirl. You see that? That is the center. I don't know which one of these you can see. But now, just so I can go ahead and take care of all this and it's not going to be in the way... I go ahead and I tie anything that's, don't pull it too tight, but just make sure you knot it maybe two or three times to secure it. And we can cut all of this off. Just snip it right on off. 
Okay, now we have a nice, clean, fresh swirl uh, for our pin so that we can get ready to put on our crochet edge. So, take a look at yours. See what you think. Don't worry about that little hole. We'll cover it. And you can kind of pull it out. Okay, you will next need your yarn, the original yarn. And I'm using, like I said, this Boyd. Uh, boy size G hook these smaller hooks just work so much better in the next step we're going to do all right get yours ready and we're gonna do the last step and you'll be done just that easy okay now we're ready to put our little crocheted edge and then we'll come back with a crochet a little pico edging after we uh, after in the next go round but the first round we're simply gonna put a crochet edge around so that it evens out everything and we can see the stitches just like you would do on most crochet pieces all right so all I'm gonna do is turn it so I'm in that place where I stopped where it's where it's kind of you know where, where the swirl stopped you can see the difference in height see that okay and I just like to go right here to where it's right there right next to where that knot that little where we ended it I just stick my crochet hook in I take my original yarn okay and I simply pull up see that just pull a loop through now I take the, both the little left the little tail and the working yarn and I'm gonna cro uh, chain one and then chain two just like that. Now I can drop the working. I can drop the little tail. All right. You may have to kind of pull it for, you know, to kind of get a little tension on it. Now, once I drop the tail, I'm ready to start to crochet around the edge of my little uh, circle here. So, the thing you want to remember is not to, you're going to try not to go you want to go as in each stitch as much as possible. So I'm going to work my crochet hook right there beside the knot. That's going to be my first stitch. And then I'm on single crochet right there. Everything is locked in place now. Okay, now when you look, if you turn, since we did the I-cord, we knitted the I-cord, we can see, you can see your stitches right here on the edge you know it makes that little V it has two you know has two legs of the stitch and you want to try to go under two legs of each one of those uh, stitches as much as possible so you need to turn your circle your little circle here too so that you're looking at the edge and just go right into the next stitch pull up a loop single crochet Look on the edge, you can see the two strands there that form that stitch. Go under and do a single crochet. Hold it on the edge for the next. Now, just be sure not to pull it tight though. Keep it loose. Don't uh, Otherwise, you're, you'll start getting a bowl. Your uh, uh, piece will start to look like a bowl. And we, we're trying to keep it, you know, fairly flat. But I'm holding it and looking at the edge as I'm crocheting around it so I can go up under those two strands and single crochet under the next two uh, strands. All right, and single crochet under the next stitch, single crochet under the next stitch, single crochet. I'm not counting or anything, people. Just Believe me, this is not that critical. You got to sit there and try to figure out. No, just as quick as you can single crochet into the next stitch. Just make sure you try not to skip any. Otherwise, like I say, it will start to curve and you don't want that. So I need to back out right there. I couldn't. Okay, single crochet. And here we go, single crochet. This is good television watching. 
as long as you have some, uh, you know, have good light that you can work, you know, with something this small. Uh, but sure, you can watch, uh, you know, Dancing with the Stars or whatever you're watching. And now you see how nice this little small, uh, cro because it has that more pointed head, it just slides right under those two strands. I'm not even, I'm not even getting any, um, uh, resistance or anything. It's just going right up under those two strands of every stitch on the edge. Just turn it to the edge. And right up under the strands you are going under, pull up a loop, single crochet. Go to the next one pull up a loop and do a single crochet. Let me get a little yarn here. Now you see how we're evening, evening, no, oh, I can't even say the word now. I think it's, I think I'm tired. <laughs> this is at night and I've been running around today doing all kind of things, trying to get my last tutorials up, picking up things, uh, you know, making sure that I had everything ready and but I'm pushing my way through it. <laughs> and I got a nice little comment from my friend Ashley. <laughs> hey, Ashley. <laughs> she said, when are you going to put another video up? We've been waiting. <laughs> well, I, I sent her a message back. I said, Ashley, you're just too funny. <laughs> Look, I'm telling you. But after these videos... I'm trying to give you enough to keep you busy. Okay, I'm coming up. I've evened out my circle. Now I'm coming up to where I started. So you just right there, anywhere, just where we started, go ahead and make a slip stitch. You know how you normally bring it through and then take it through. A nice slip stitch. Now look how nice and even our circle looks now. Because um, before that, we really had a swirl. So it wasn't really the circle of life. But now that we have a circle, now I can call my pin the circle of life pin. Okay. All right. After you do that, you I've uh, slip stitched to where we began. Now I'm simply going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Now we're just going to do a little pico stitch around it, which forms our little bumps. And they represent, I just tell myself, well, if this is a circle of life, all these little places are little stops along the way or different seasons. Different seasons are different things. You know, maybe that's when you got married. Maybe that's when you had your first baby. Maybe that's when you had your second baby. Maybe that's when you got divorced. <laughs> I'm just messing. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> maybe that's when you decide to get a new job. Maybe that's when you took a trip. Yeah, so... Those are different seasons in our circle of life. Okay. So, all right, we've chained four. This is the first pico. And as soon as you chain four, you see that same spot, that, that same stitch. There's a little hole. There's always going to be that little hole right down there. Okay, normally we go into a pico, we go into the chain, but that's too much trouble for this. Just go right back into that little hole at the bottom. Pull a loop through and then do a single crochet see when i do stuff i try to make it easier people so if i can so i can remember it remember i don't have written patterns you know i just have little little notes but if i keep it simple then i always remember all right so that's the first little pico you see it all right now in the next chain you can see the chains now really well give me a single crochet just like that you're going to have one between each pico, like a little spacer. Now, in the next chain, give me a single crochet. This time, we're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Oops, four. Now, at the very base of that, you can see there's a hole right there. So, that's where you go back into that hole, bring up a loop, and single crochet. Easy. <laughs> okay, the next stitch... Give me a single crochet, then the next 
There's a next chain. I pull up a loop. I single crochet and chain four. One, two, three, four. Now go right back to the bottom. You'll see that, that little hole right there. Just go right into that little hole and single crochet. Now single crochet in the next chain. Single crochet in the next chain and chain four. One, oops, two, three, and four. Get me a little more yarn here. Okay. All right, now you got to go back down at the very bottom. You'll see that little hole there. You go right in there and single crochet. Go to the next chain right there. Single crochet. That's the spacer. Then in the next chain, you single crochet and chain four. One, two, three, four. And go in the base of that and single crochet to lock it in. Now you're getting your little, you see, it's coming to life. Ooh. Okay, let's see, can't get any yarn here. All right, here we go. All right, now we need to make a spacer, so single crochet there. In the next chain, single crochet, and then we add one, two, three, four. And go back in the base. And single crochet. Alright, single crochet. The next chain, give me a single crochet. Now, one, two, three, four. And at the base, okay. Now, single crochet. The next chain, single crochet. But this one we will add one, two, three, and four. Now it's looking a little, it's looking a little better. I'm glad I did this blue, it's pretty. Okay, I locked it in, now single crochet for the spacer, another single crochet, and then I do my chain four. One, two, three, four. Lock it in at the base. That's a single crochet. Most time you know we lock it in with a slip stitch, but I'm just doing single crochet so I can remember that real quick. Okay, the next chain, single crochet for the spacer, then single crochet, chain four, one, two, three, four. How you doing? Single crochet locks it in. Okay, now you can kind of see. All right, let's so a single crochet for a spacer right there. Next chain, single crochet, one, two, three, four. You see why it's just like a, a little small piece of yarn? Okay, so single crochet, single crochet, chain four, one, two, three, four, single crochet. Get a little more yarn here. Okay, single crochet. Single crochet, chain four, one, two, three, four. Now lock it in with a single crochet. Single crochet, single crochet, chain four, one, two, three, four. Lock it in at the base with a single crochet. Oh, look at it, it's coming together. Oh, okay, take this, Ashley. <laughs> oh, I hope you enjoy it. And listen, don't forget, you got to send me some pictures, girl. You got to. I'm, I've got, I'm collecting pictures for Jay's Friendship Album, number two, page two. One, two, three, four. And, uh, okay, lock it in with a single crochet now. Single crochet, single crochet. One, two, three, four. Lock it in with a single crochet. No yarn. I'm telling you, I, don't throw away those scrap pieces. Single crochet, single crochet. Now chain one, two, three, four. Now listen, people. 
This is just made up. I did not count not one thing. You're going to have to fudge at the end. If you can get something in the, in this space, maybe just do. Let's see if I can. I think I can get something. Yeah, I can get it in there. I can get an extra one in there. So I'm just doing that. And then one, two, three, four. And then I go in and single crochet. That brings me around to the first. Nobody's going to stop and count your, your little picots. See that? Now I can cut, cut my yarn, and you know how you pull it through. I just pull it through. Well, uh, do a slip stitch. I'm sorry, slip stitch it to the first one. We didn't do that. I'm sorry, slip stitch. And then pull it through, however you end it. And then this you will weave. Always weave everything towards the center. Where's my yarn needle? Just grab your yarn needle real quick and just weave. Um, just weave the thread so that you're always working. Always having your yarn to end near the center. And then this one I'll weave a little bit towards the center also where I started. Then you can tie it off. Okay, so see now I have two tails. I can just simply tie those off. And I tie about three little knots just to make sure. Okay. Well, the main part is done. Now, the fun part is trying to find the correct or the right or the, the, the center that you think will enhance and then of course the back I suggest putting on a pin back that way you can wear it with anything you can cut any little tails that are too high you can just whack those off but you just put a little dab of hot glue and put your regular little pin bags I keep them I keep a big old pack I got from Michaels or Joann's you know what your pin bags are I've got some in silver I think that'll work better but they come in silver or gold whichever Okay, so you'll put a little pin back on the back. Then, like I said, the next thing is to find the best thing that will make the center pop for you. Now, look at that one. Oh, isn't that pretty? Let's see if I can see that on camera. Is that pretty? I don't know if I'm it's showing up because I can't see my camera. It kind of reminds you of this one. See? Look at that. And then you can add charms if the person, if there's some, something really special that the person loves and you need to add a charm, you can add a charm right up under the stone or the button or you can add it on the edge at the bottom so they'll always know the bottom and of course that's where, that's where you ended it. Uh, that's where you end uh, the pico so you can put your little um, charm there. So, well, what do you think? of Jay's Circle of Life pen with all your little special moments in your life. You know, just little things that, see? Life is full of bumps. <laughs> I just made that up. Okay, all right. But there it goes. I've been wanting to get this done, so now it is done. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you give it a try. They're so pretty. You just, uh, like I said, some some you might not want to give. You just keep them for yourself. But they're, they're fun because they're just scrap yarn, and you can practice. And once you get some real pretty, and then you can, uh, you know, give them to your friends. Put them on your pretty garments. Make them look really pretty. Well, I hope you've enjoyed it. I finally got something done. I feel so happy that I'm getting things done. We're having fun and getting things done. I'm on a roll. And I, if it goes well, I've got a couple of other surprises for you. So I'm trying to get it. Like I said, my son, you know, he's quite busy, but, you know, it's, he's has to come and pick them up and edit everything, get everything put together. So, 
Let's just see how I can how much I can get done before the end of the year. And then hopefully next year, guess what? We'll start all over. You and me. Well, I've had fun. I'm working on the next little uh, surprise for you. So, this is Jay. This is Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam and her Circle of Life pins. Hoping that your Circle of Life will bring you lots of blessings and friends. What do you think of that? Until next time, see ya!